Hello everyone, welcome to Geometry Nodes in 3.0. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make the cell fracture effect and how to dynamically affect those fractures using some simple math. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's go and I'll clear the scene and add in a new sphere. The sphere will be the basis for our effect, so let's add that in. We want to add one material, one for the outside, and another material that we'll be using for the inside, just like that. So next up, what we want to do is enable the cell fracture add-on, which is pretty simple. Just go into your user preferences, go into add-ons, type in cell fracture, and you should see it right here, the first option. Make sure this checkbox is clicked, save your preferences, and then what we want to do is go into our search menu and click cell fracture as we should see it's in objects quick effects cell fracture let's click that what we want to do next is set the noise to one just like that the source limit or the amount of fractures that we'll have to 200 and offset our material index right here to one this will make it so that the outside is one material and the inside is another so with those settings enabled if we click ok we'll see the effect start as we could see, all the fractures are being calculated and then bound back to the original object. And as we can see, boom, we now have all these fractures right here. And let's make sure that you move the, uh, the original object away, or in this case, we can just delete it. But yeah, now we have all these fractures, pretty good, uh, that we can affect dynamically. So let's go and move this into another collection. So we have this collection right here. Let's move it into collection two and rename this collection to cells. There we go. And now that we have this collection all bundled up, we could go and start our geometry nodes process. Let's add in a new plane and move it over to here and make sure that this is not in the cells collection. I made that mistake before, but make sure that your plane is not in the same collection as the cells. Let's add in a new geometry node and have the input be collection info. Let's select the cells collection. So if we put that in here, we can see that we now are referencing this collection, but we need to do one thing first. We need to click separate children and have this set to relative. This will make it so that if we move the object, it won't affect the collection. And if we move the collection, it'll respond correctly. So now we could go and hide the original collection so that we only have the geometry nodes version. This will make it so that there's no duplicates and that we can now affect this dynamically. So let's go and input a scale instances node. As the name suggests, this lets us scale the instances just like this. So now we have this effect working and also just for uh, redundancy's sake, you can also rotate these instances and translate these instances dynamically. So this effect is way more versatile than just scaling. Okay. Now let's make an empty control these parameters. So let's add in an empty right here and let's move it over here a little bit. And what we want to do is get the distance from our empty right here. So let's drag and drop our empty into this scene, set it to relative. I'll move over this a little bit just so that we can see more of the node editor. And what we do want to do next to get the distance is add in the position input of the original cells referencing this collection add in a vector math node and set this to distance. So now we're going to hook up the position right here and the location right here. And what this does is give us the proximity from this empty, pretty simply. So let's go and move this over a little bit. And what we wanna do next is use a map range node so that we can constrain the distance so that it doesn't just go crazy. So as we can see here, if we hook this up and then move this around, that it is scaling the uh, instances dynamically. So let's go and set the maximum distance to two and the minimum distance to one. Maybe set the interpolation to smoother step. That just makes it smoother as the name suggests. So as we can see, as we move this, it is scaling this dynamically. Okay, but what if you want more objects in your scene? You don't want to do too many because it could start lagging, but this is fairly energy efficient or computationally efficient. As we can see, this entire process takes less than a millisecond. So yeah, let's add in some more. So let's go and add in a new, uh, let's say a torus right here. 
Let's increase the radius. This is entirely necessary, but just to show how to add more stuff into your collection. Let's move this over to here. Uh, add in our material one and material two. Just to recap, cell fracture, all the settings should still be there. So if we do that, it should build up the cells even more and then constrain them again. And as we can see, if we were to, let's go and delete the original torus, select all of these ones, make sure you don't select the empty or anything like that. And if we move this into the cells collection, we can see that boom, it is now working. That's basically the entire effect. Again, if you do want to affect the rotation, just copy the smoother step function, set it to rotation, something like that. It'll need some customization and stuff like that, but as you can see, the rotation is happening. And we could turn that up a lot more. There we go. All cool stuff. And also for the translation, similar thing, even though you might need a vector math node at the end of this to control where it's going, rather than just one place. And actually, wait, 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 wait. We could do something cool with this. So if we use the position, this is for the translate, not the rotation. So I'll just delete the rotation for the time being, just for simplicity's sake. So let's add this into there, the position right here. And if we copy the empty's position and then use a mix node, you'll see what happens in a second. We can mix between the original position and the empty position. So if we put that into there and hook that into the translation, Let's see. Oh, nope. We need to use a set position node for this. Because if you, if you don't know, the set position node also works with instances. So let's go and put that right over to there. And we can see now that according to the proximity, these will be attracted to the empties position, which is really cool. But yeah, that's basically the entire effect. There's lots that is possible with this, so I encourage you to experiment it with it and try out many, many wild and different effects. But yeah, that's the entire effect. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe, comment what you would want to see in the future videos, uh, and be sure to check out my Twitter and Gumroad accounts. There's plenty of free and paid stuff out there on Gumroad. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.